everyone, this is Kalimara here. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. Today, I have a very special video because this is something I've only ever dreamed about doing, but we are going to be designing some enamel pins. Enamel pins are one of my favorite types of merch because they're super durable and long-lasting, and they look super luxurious and exclusive. I just love them. And thanks to my collaboration with GSJJ, I'm finally able to make my own! GSJJ is an e-commerce website that produces promotional gifts merchandise like enamel pins, lapel pins, wristbands, embroidered patches, and more. They have been in the manufacturing business for 20 years with offices in the US and Canada. Their prices go as low as 30 cents a piece because they use factory direct prices and they offer free shipping to the US, UK, Canada, and Australia with no minimum quantity. And if you're not an artist but still want cool custom merch, you can choose from their gallery of free art to design your own pins or have them design it for you for free. They have 11,000 five-star reviews, so I'm super excited to be able to work with them for this project. I'm planning on doing a giveaway for the final products and who knows, maybe one day they'll be available for purchase to the public as well. Click on the link in my description if you're interested in learning more and maybe placing your own order. But now, let's get right into it! I will be creating 4 enamel pin designs of the characters from my original series Wild Word, which you can find right here on my channel. This will be a completely new experience for me too, so let's walk through it together. For my design, I knew I wanted to do a chibi art style, which is something I don't do very often. I just think it'll translate better on a pin and be even cuter to look at. I don't really follow any specific rules when drawing chibi, but here's how I did my chibis. The first thing I did was look at some examples. And I do think that, like any other art style, different artists draw chibi differently. I've noticed that some artists draw really small bodies and way bigger eyes when they do chibi, whereas others make the characters chubbier and more squishable. I think both are equally valid and it's really just about picking the proportions and shape you think looks best. For me personally, chubby chibis look more appealing and stylized, so that's what I'll be doing. Every time I've had to draw chibis, I always struggled the most with the fact that they don't really have necks. I don't know why, but it really throws me off. It just feels viscerally wrong to stick a character's heads directly on their torsos and have their arms coming out from where their necks should be. But I had 4 designs to complete with a set deadline, so I got over that pretty quickly and just did it. It was a bit of a challenge, but I think I managed it. The first character I'm drawing is Fel Noir, who is kind of like the tactical leader of the magical girl group. If you want more information about her, you can check out the full video I did on her design and writing. But because her character is very flirtatious and fun and kind of mysterious, I wanted to do something flirty and fun for her pose. And I think I managed to do that. Another learning curve I encountered was the bodies, because chibis operate on a completely different set of rules. I've seen some people do rectangles, triangles, or outright circles, but I settled on this bean shape that I think has a stronger gesture while still looking chibi. For the limbs, it's also up in the air because I've seen some people do noodle limbs, some people do thicker limbs, and for me, I'm leaning more to thicker limbs because it lets me create these subtle curves that make it more anatomically accurate, even though I'm not really the best at anatomical accuracy in the first place. <laughs> For Fel Noir's pose, I wanted to do something flirty and fun, and I think I managed to do that. Once I had the base done, it was time to actually translate the design over to chibi. For this step, my plan was to exaggerate and simplify. Because this design is going on an enamel pin, I had to make sure that small details would be noticeable enough on a smaller scale. For Fel Noir here, I had to simplify her shoes, sleeves, 
ear fluffs and the markings on her neck because having it 100% accurate wouldn't really be noticeable on the final pin anyway. And to just be mindful of the restriction enamel pins have as a medium. The clearer and simpler the illustration is, the better. On the other hand, I exaggerated her eye shape to make it look more compelling and to make sure it stands out as part of the design. I keep in mind that the lines will all be shiny metal, so the line thickness will really determine the drawing silhouette. I think there's so much you could experiment with, and I already know that the next time I design enamel pins, I'm going to play around with the line dynamics a lot more. But for these current chibi designs, I wanted to keep things simple and focus more on creating accurate chibi versions of my characters. The coloring part was super easy because I basically just filled in base colors without any shading. Though as an extra touch, I did decide to add these sparkles onto the hair and some blush to make it extra fun. I'll also be showing later on how GSJG translated my design for the production of the actual pins. But that's it for Fell. The next character I chibified was Nightingale. It's the same principle when it came to drawing the body. Big head, bean body, and chubby limbs. Because it's Nightingale, in case you guys don't know who she is, she is kind of this diva character who really stands out uh, among her other team members. Whereas the other ones are kind of more built for combat and stealth, she is very much the distraction of the group. If you guys play D&D, she's basically the bard. She's not meant to be subtle. So obviously, I went for an extravagant and eye-catching pose, which is really emphasized when I added in her wings. I tried to keep her wings simple and cute to fit the chibi style, and I think I managed it. Though I do end up readjusting the position later on when I added in her hair so that it doesn't get drowned out. Don't you hate it when you draw something or add details that you're really proud of, only to have it covered up in the final drawing? Let me know in the comments what your most devastating experience having to cover up a detail you're proud of is. And because I was already drawing feathers, I proceeded to draw her sentinel stone and then her eyes. Like Fell, I also exaggerated Nightingale's eyes to make it stand out more against the rest of the design. I actually really enjoyed this challenge because it allowed me to take the character's unique traits and dial it up to 11. I already intended for Nightingale to have big, expressive eyes, and I really got to showcase that here. She looks significantly happier than she usually does, which I think is a nice change of pace for her. Of course, I also had to simplify her markings, mostly just omitting the feather details, but I kept her hair relatively accurate to the original design's detail, particularly the front part. The back part, I actually went back and forth a little bit trying to decide whether to go for more detail or simplify it down. Her dress is already pretty simple, so that translated very well to chibi, and in the end, I decided to fully define the curls in her hair. Nightingale ended up having way more detail and lines than Fell, but I think this balances out since Nightingale's colors are much simpler than Fell as well. I ended up playing with the line dynamics a lot more with Nightingale, and I think it translates quite well onto the enamel pin. And speaking of colors, this was a bit of a challenge because Nightingale's design relies heavily on that holographic effect that you can only achieve through shading. But shading and enamel pins are two things that don't mix. So for this particular design, I used solid block shading to try and achieve a similar effect on the pin. I did this on her suit, eyes, gem, and fabric train. And like Fell, I also added sparkles in her hair. I think the final design turned out super adorable, but let me know what you think.
Next up, we have the gorgeous but extremely intricate Ulara. I knew this one was going to be a challenge based on two things, her crown and her sashes. Ulara's suit is inspired by ancient Majapahit attire, and if there's one thing traditional clothes from the Indonesian archipelago have, it's being ridiculously ornate. It wouldn't really read as Majapahit attire if it had less detail. <coughs> Raya and the Last Dragon. <coughs> So I couldn't really simplify the details like I did with Fel Noir and Nightingale. I had to translate it one to one and just cross my fingers that it'll work out. But the true villain of this design was actually Ulara's sashes because it is an absolute nightmare to look at with all the other layers stacked together. I was genuinely concerned because the sashes are meant to be translucent, showing the details underneath it while having details of its own. And all that's going to do on an enamel pin is create very confusing lines. I even had the idea of making the sash part of the metal, but it was too complicated for my tiny brain to handle. Since this is my first time making enamel pins, I decided to keep things simple, so later on you'll see that I ended up making the sash fully opaque instead of translucent. But first, the sketch. Ulara's pose definitely feels the most grounded out of all the ones I did so far. Literally and figuratively. The other girls kind of look like they're floating in some nebulous void, whereas Ulara looks like she fully has her feet on the ground. Which I think makes sense for her animal, because snakes are often associated with the earth and represent the underworld in a lot of cultures, well particularly Indonesian culture. It also suits her personality as the most grounded of the girls, and being the leader that keeps everyone together. But to make it more fun, I decided to have her play with her sashes a bit. Of course, my favorite part of this design was drawing her eyes. Ulara has a very unique eye shape that was really fun to exaggerate in chibi form. The outer edges of her eyes are downturned, creating a gentle, doe-eyed appearance. Pythons in general have this adorable puppy face, and I think I managed to capture that here. Coloring her in was pretty straightforward. Ulara had more color than I realized, particularly in her hair, which of course I added the sparkle to as well. I realized that the more chibis I did, the faster I was completing them, and it really goes to show that practice and experience really help to improve your productivity. My problem is that shortly after not doing it for a while, I completely forget and go back to square one. Which kind of sucks, but I do think that's a sign for me to pick up my pen and draw more frequently. If you're an artist yourself watching this video, let me know in the comments below how often you draw in a week. All things considered, I think the complexity of her design translated pretty well into chibi, but let me know what you think. Finally, we have the fearsome and adorable Amura. She's pretty intimidating most of the time, so I wanted to show her when she has her guard down a little bit to match the cuteness of the other girls. She gives off this baffled toddler energy when she's out of her element, so I thought it would be funny to have her look like she's being grabbed by the scruff and has no idea what to do. Considering she's probably going to be hanging somewhere as an enamel pin anyway, I thought this was fitting. Amura's design was surprisingly really easy to translate into chibi. She does have a lot of intricate markings around her sentinel stone and face, but they weren't anything too complicated. I'm not sure if it's because I've gotten a lot of practice at this point or if it's genuinely because of the design though. Probably more the former than the latter to be honest. Amura, of course, has very sharp, piercing eyes, and I did have to exaggerate the shape a little bit to make it more prominent on such a small design. 
And for her mouth, I decided to give her a little pout expression to make her look extra cute as opposed to scary, like she usually does. The rest of her design just fell perfectly in place, and I especially had fun drawing her ears and tail. The sketch on its own is pretty complex, but I think once the colors come in, it should help it make more sense. I was actually a bit intimidated by the coloring process, fitting considering the character, but it was so much simpler and fun than I expected. Amura is really treating me well. Of course, it also helped that I didn't have to detail her well-defined muscles. Um, in case you aren't familiar with her, she's pretty much the muscle of the group. So yeah, <laughs> I was really pleased with how her scarf looked and the crisscrossing formation of Amura's belt looked especially clear in this chibi version. I think Amura looks adorable and I'm really happy with how she turned out. These are the final pin designs for my girls. I was really worried it would be too much to translate into enamel pins, but here's how GSJG translated them for proofing. As you can see, they managed to capture every detail like really well. They really let me have full creative control and I was really impressed with their cooperation. They also let me pick the materials I wanted for each of the pins as opposed to one material throughout, which I'm really grateful for. And it just added that extra layer of customization to it that I really appreciate. I kind of wrestled a bit with the different color metals I could have for the designs. Um, the default color they gave me was black. So I played around with the colors a bit, trying to pick the ones that would contrast the color scheme of each pin while also conveying a bit more personality. Obviously, my first choices was to go for a more copper color for Amura, a gold color for Ulara, black for Fel, and silver for Nightingale to match the overall color palette that they have. But then I realized that it looked a bit samey and a bit overwhelming so I decided to switch things up plus I think it really helped the lines stand out a lot more against the dominant colors in each design. So for Fel Noir, I ended up going with silver to contrast the primarily black color scheme that she has and alternatively I chose black to help Nightingale's design stand out a lot more against the dominantly white color scheme that she has. For Ulara, the gold was a bit too overwhelming so I decided to go with a copper rose gold color which I think ended up working really well in my favor because she is meant to have a bit more pink in her design in the first place. And for Amura, she looked absolutely stunning in the gold. So that was what I went with right away. And it's also kind of funny because I ended up giving the girls each other's colors kind of. And I just thought that was really cute. And now the moment you've been waiting for, the pins themselves. I'm so, so pleased with these. I think they look absolutely stunning. And considering it's my first time making enamel pins, they turned out so well. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'm planning on doing a giveaway of these babies. So keep an eye out for announcements on my Twitter and Instagram if you're interested in getting a full set of these girls because I definitely want to share them with you guys. I think... I'm going to probably give most of these to my patrons on Patreon in case you're not a pond dweller yet. That is probably a good incentive to join my Patreon. But otherwise, the remainders I am going to be giving away randomly on a public giveaway. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. And thanks for hanging out with me in the pond for a while. I hope your fingers didn't get too pruney. Once again, big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon. If you want to become a pond dweller and get all these perks, including free stuff, go ahead and join my Patreon. 
If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art or chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want more of my stories, check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!